Okay. okay, continue. All right. And then Okay. So can you hear me? Absolutely. I can see you and hear you. Oh good. See? See how good I'm getting? Yes, you are <laughs> awesome. I'm hot. Are you ready for this? I'm as ready as I can be. Yep, all you need is a pen and a piece of paper and I'm gonna do everything on the screen. Yep, perfect. So we're gonna go through the manuscript that I got in my email yesterday. I'm gonna open it up so we can both look at it and see how it flows. Okay. Um, and then every time we meet, we are going to just look at a small piece of it and if I'm going to have you read it out loud to me, and if you don't like the way it sounds, I'm going to be going through it and just doing the developmental editing just to make sure it sounds good. So we're only going to do maybe three or four pages each time. Okay. So it doesn't get overwhelming. So um, it's going to be really important that we meet both on Monday and Friday. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Because we're, we're really just going to be scanning through it, eyeballing it, making sure it flows. And then I've already paid your editor. So it's gonna go to me for first editing. It's gonna go to another editor for the final line. She does line by line, making sure that it's damn near perfect. It's, okay. it's, it's gonna be 99.9, .9, no mistakes, no errors, because by the time you and I have gone through it and she's gone through it, it'll oh. be ready. It'll be ready to publish way before December. Okay. Yay. All right. So let me share my screen with you so that you can see what it looks like. And they did a, a brilliant job at typing it. Oh, God. Yeah. That's great. Brilliant job at typing it. So, oh, that's really good. This young, young girl. I've never even met her. Oh, wow. <laughs> How'd you find her? This friend of mine works at Loris, and his brother also does. So, his brother knew someone. And just by the grace of God, asked her and uh, told her, I said, this is the deadline. This is what I need. So she humped all weekend doing it. Wow. Took her about seven hours. Wow. Well, yeah. they sent it to me Sunday, last night at 7.43 yep. p.m. Yep. And yeah, I just he... responded. Yep. This is awesome. And here it is. It's uh, right now it's 142 pages. Okay. So I'm going to download this onto my computer and I'm going to create a folder for you. So every time we come on, I'm gonna open up your folder. So put it over here. That way I can find it every time. Best out. New folder. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. Type it. Okay. That's all right. So we're using Word. This is where I'll be doing all my editing. Save. There we go. New folder. Susan. Susan Marie. Uh huh. And T with a capital M. M. No M. Okay. No capital. capital. Nope. D O Y L E. Yep. Beautiful. Save. So I am going to put this is the original. I'm going to save this as original. And we're going to end up with several different copies as we go through different drafts. So this is the original here. Okay, I'll go back to my email. Okay, so I'm going to close my email. So we don't need a whole bunch of stuff open. 
close this. Okay, and I'm going to make this really big so that we can both see it. Okay, perfect. All right, we're going to go ahead and start reading from here, and then we'll stop along the way. You want me to read that? Mm -hmm. A Woman Unto Herself by Susan Marie Doyle. Beautiful. Uh, to Kit and my sweet son, Anthony James, whose short life gifted me with the last bit of courage and strength to complete this work. Okay, beautiful. Is this your acknowledgments page? Uh, well, dedicate, I, who I'm uh, dedicating the book to. All right, so this will be dedication. I do think I, yeah, I do want an acknowledgement page, which I don't really have together, but I'm thinking I should have one of those. Okay, so I'm going to give this a title. This is going to be dedications. That's fine. Yep. So put that in the middle. And then we will make this, instead of blue, we'll make it black. There. We'll underline it and make it bold. All right. And so uh, whatever kind of font you want is what we will have throughout the entire document. Uh -huh. So this font is Calibri. And then your what you created is Times New Roman. Uh -huh. how, do you, how do you want your font for this entire thing? Uh, probably the Times New Roman, I think. Okay. So yeah. we'll keep it that. And then if you think of something different later, then let me know. Okay. And I can easily, it's an easy fix. Yeah. Uh, we're going to make these titles uh, 22. Make them really big. Okay, perfect. So that is your dedications page. If you think of something you want to add uh -huh. Friday, let me know and I'll type it in for you. Yeah, I so I would like to do an acknowledgement page, which is not a part of this, and I'll have that together by Friday. Okay, perfect. And I'll, I will just, you can just read that to me and I'll yeah, just type it's it. it's not going to be real long, but I do want to acknowledge the people that really have been fuel and force and a lot of things for this. Okay, All so right. So this is a Liz Van X. Mund okay. So you want me to read this? Mm-hmm. Susan Marie Doyle's woman print first surfaced as a final project for my myth, symbols, science, sorry, signs and symbols graduate religious study course. I was teaching at Mundelein College, Chicago in 1987. As Susan Marie, probably that Marie should have a small M. Ah, there we go. Both yeah. here well, and above, right? Right yep, here right. too. Yeah, and it's probably going to be Excellent. throughout the whole thing, but anyway. Okay. Slowly unrolled the calligraphy piece. The students and I stood speechless, circled around her work. Her poetry danced in blues, reds, and I think that's gods before our eyes. I think it's supposed to be gold. Ah, oh, okay. Gold. Oh, that makes sense. Blues, gold. reds. Yeah, before our eyes. Each word, each letter embodied meaning and grace. Privileged audience that we were, we urged her to find a way to share her poem prayer with others. This she has done, first through her print and now through a woman unto herself. Most importantly, in accepting our challenge, Susan Marie, small m again, has shared the journey of her heart into the waiting heart of God. Okay, let's pause here. This needs to be indented. So there's that. And do you like this font? And this is also, I think this is double spaced. Yeah, yeah it's when we put it in the book, it's gonna be 1.5 just because it looks better. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna change that now as we go. Okay. So this will kind of be, we'll know where we left off by the, by the way that it's right. spaced, spaced. Right. right. So I'll click save here. Um, now it, this last part where it says a woman under herself and it's underlined, is that going to be the name of the book? Is that what that means? Yes. 
That is the title of the book. Okay. So yep. let's do this. Let's do comma, um, which is so that the reader is clear, which is the title of this book. So they know this is a part of print and it's also a book. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Right. All right. Let's go here. Well, it would be easy to describe a woman unto herself as a spiritual handbook for survivors of sexual abuse, specifically for survivors of incest. It is more than that. Taken collectively, this series of meditations and lavish illustrations represents the mystic's journey into a deep knowing of God and self. It invites the reader to consider the ways in which pain can offer the great purging that leads first to transformation. Oh, I got it. There we go. That's my fault. Go ahead. Okay. It invites the reader to consider the way in which pain can offer the great purging that leads first to transformation and then to union with God. In this scheme of things, shame, however toxic and suffering, however acute, can be catalysts for surrender to a God who desires only our love. Can I give you feedback real quick? Okay. This is brilliant writing. Yep. Wow. This is absolutely brilliant. Yep. Yeah. Wow. This book is a very gifted person. She was my first spiritual director, actually. And so I the name, I what's the title of this? Just this section. I don't know. What's it called when somebody writes? Is it the, uh, you tell me, is it the yep. end that's preface. this is this is the preface okay um yes that's awesome that she wrote this for you yeah i was her first directee i think also wow so where did you meet where did the two of you meet she was my um professor when i was working on my master's who was okay. teaching the course on poet she's an incredible poet and wow. writer yeah all right. So is this a part of it? Yes, yes, yes. Yep, yep. Okay, so this needs to come up. Whoops, what happened? Oh, they put a page break. Okay, I'll fix that later. All right, let's keep moving. Okay, the M, small M. I just, I'm sure there's other things, but. Okay. Susan Marie's reflections addressed to God, to Mary, to Magdalene, and even to her perpetrator poignantly reflect a journey to freedom, dignity, and truth. These reflections, together with the exquisite paintings, are clustered thematically around lines from, it should be the woman print, or, well, I don't know, from, yeah, Where? the woman print. Hold on, I got lost. Where are we? Okay, we're in the third, fourth line down. Thematically around lines from the woman print. Ah, okay. Is that a part of the title? Uh, the woman, no, the woman print is just a description of, that's what I call that art piece, the woman print. Okay, so, so let's, do you want it to go like this inside the woman print or should it go woman print is the actual title and the goes here? Yeah, probably that. Okay. Little, yeah. Beginning with a heart full of compassion and ending with desire to be that which you were created to be. In each section, Susan Marie explores the ways in which she, oops, he moved it on me. So hold yeah, on. Yeah, I moved it to a new That's paragraph. Okay. 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 In each section. And Susan Marie needs to be small again. Yeah. Uh, explores way okay uh, and by extension okay in each section Susan Marie explores the ways in which she and by extension all women she is made and so would that be our maid if you're doing and all women 
I don't yeah. know. Yeah, hold on. Let me read it. In each section, Susan Marie explores the way in which she, and by extension, all women are, are. Yes. Are, yep. Are made in God's image and gifted with God's goodness to God's glory and delight. With childlike simplicity, she asserts her trust in the details of her own journey and in God's great love. Her words burn with authenticity. Wow. There is no morbid focusing on shame and suffering. References to her childhood abuse and its consequence are woven throughout the text, but always within the context of redemption. Nice. By being carved out through violence, which is one of the lines in there, there's a place hollowed in me where God's seed waits for the fertile ground of my willing spirit, writes Susan Marie. Another small M there. Wow. Okay. Out of brokenness, compassion has been born, space in between, in my heart. Okay. My arms are strengthened to hold the broken Christ I see in others, and most especially the broken Christ I see in me. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, so this is the preface. So I'm gonna, I'm going to so make there this is one other part. I think there's, I think it keeps. There's another page. Oh yeah, I know. I'm just gonna make sure that okay. this is, um, this is formatted before I forget about it because this heading needs to be just like the other heading. It needs to be bold. Okay, perfect. So that's the first two. Um, I need to single space. Yeah, we just finished this section. Uh -huh. Single space here. Nice, okay. Okay, a woman unto herself offers powerful testimony that with God, all things are possible. The lowly are raised up. The shamed can see God's beauty reflected in themselves. Those who were victims become courageous warrior women. Those who were trampled, I'm sorry, those who were, I don't, oh, I don't know what that's supposed to be. Let's see. Those who were oh trampled, were trampled should yeah. have a D instead of the yeah. S. Those who were trampled encourage others to seek that inner power which transforms not only the structures of oppression, but also hardened hearts. Having left the desolation of the tomb. Uh, this is screwed up too. Uh, having left the desolation of the tomb, bend her. Behind her. Oh, behind her, right. Yeah. Okay. Susan Marie acknowledges that tomb time was a time of preparation. Okay. Let me move me here. So just a minute. This is a, uh, I'm going to break this paragraph up. This is a huge paragraph. Okay. There we go. Now, okay. The tomb time was a time of preparation, which had led her into greater intimacy with her God. Now that the stone has been rolled away, she can leave victimhood behind her and instead embrace personhood. A self is a self that is whole and holy because of God's fidelity. It is this illumined self which shares its wisdom page after page, drawing us into the mystery of our own lives awakening our own seeds of desire for the God who desires us. For those of us who have been chipped and cracked in any way, however, whatsoever, to those of us who have been, whatever, dimmed, dimmed by life's yeah. circumstances, Susan Marie, another small M, Doyle offers stirring words. I am a vessel chipped and cracked, sometimes feeling there is little left of me to hold anything. 
I have felt discarded, left for lost, forgotten and cast aside as rubbish. Yet somehow I house the wind, the breath of God, and in the gaping holes of my being, God's spirit breath moves in and around, in and out and around me. Thank you, Susan Marie, for this act of generosity. And actually her last name now, oh wait, no, that, wait. Yeah, that is right. Elizabeth Ann Stewart. Yep, that's right. Wow, that's awesome. Oh, Susan Marini is another small M. But yeah, that's it. Wow, this is this is so cool. Okay. So this needs to be single spaced. Hey, honey. Whatever. Your phone is going off. There we go. So now they're all indented. And this one, this is a long quote. Okay, so that goes like that. Nice. Okay. Oh. That's your preface now. Introduction. Okay. This needs to be... I don't even remember what I wrote here, so this will be interesting. Oh yeah, and this will get you ready uh, later on. We'll we'll have these recordings. So later on, if you decide you want to do an audio book, we'll have these recordings, so you won't have to read it all over again. Oh. If you want to do an audio book, uh, there's also an option to hire a narrator, hmm. but most people want to they hear, they mind. want to hear the author. Yeah, that they really love that. Yep, I would so, like to do it with my own voice. All right, there we go, okay. Okay, the introduction. This book in itself is a Paschal mystery. I die to all my fears, to all my secrecy, to my shame in being found out. I died to my desire to please, to the notion of what will people think if they knew, oh, if they know the details of my life. I don't know if that should be new. Yeah, it should be new. Yeah. You go over there. My prayer in this offering is that the resurrection will continue to find expression in the lives that this work touches. The power of wanting to offer another comfort in solidarity is what actually took me past my fears. In the deepest sense of being one body, I know that all God has done in my life has power to bring hope and promise to others who are suffering. Many years ago, when I was on a retreat in Pecos, New Mexico, that's got a period that shouldn't be, many years, many years ago, I was on a retreat, wait a second, I was on a retreat in Pecos, New Mexico. It was an Advent, that should be a semicolon or something. Yeah, because that's an yeah. incomplete sentence. Yeah. It was an Advent journey into healing the inner child. Little did I know at the time all that would come as a result of that experience. One of the most powerful treasures I brought home with me was Abbot David's words. In regard to evangelization and spreading the gospel of Jesus, we are only called to do one thing, and that is to share our stories. It is in the sharing of our stories that we bring strength and hope to weary souls on their journey. And so in attempt to offer back to God all that has been given, I offer you, my dear reader, the gift of my story. As a survivor of incest who grew up in the Catholic tradition, I realized that I was most deeply wounded in my relationship with Mary and with the Father God. The only person in scripture that I felt kindred with was Mary Magdalene. It has been critical for me to go back and reframe their stories in order to reclaim my own goodness and sense of belonging to God. The image that allowed me to begin the writing was Mother Mary and Magdalene at the foot of the cross. 
the question that came was, who were these two women to each other, the whore and the virgin, as they stood together watching the man they loved die? I am not entering into a theological debate as to Magdalene's true identity. I am working purely as it was recorded in my child's heart. She was the prostitute. It is from that vantage point that I am restoring the sense of sacred sexuality. The title of the book, A Woman Unto Herself, comes from the true translation of the word virgin, which means a woman unto herself. It is becoming that woman unto myself that I can finally understand who Mary really is in my life. I am finally able to be in a relationship with her. Ah, let's see. I might want to change that line. In becoming, hold on. Becoming the woman unto myself, I can finally understand who Mary really is in my life. I want to, I think, make that all. And thus, I am finally able, instead of another sentence there, thus, I am finally, yeah, thus would be okay. I am finally able to be in a relationship with her. I have struggled with images of both Mother God and Father God. Some of the prayers throughout the book reflect that struggle as I cry out to Amma and Yah, taken from Yahweh. I continue to search for a God with whom I can be in relationship. I am called out of my anger and pain back to a prayer to my father, God. I can only utter the words. My perpetrator was not my father, yet that God relationship was deeply wounded. I now long to know God who is provide, who is, who is provider. It should be. And truly cares about the details of my life. A God that promises protection and with whom I can be a child at rest, free from responsibilities. So okay, hold be, on. Okay. Yeah, there's up here, after it says Yahweh, I continue to search for a God. That should be capital G, right? Right, yep, yep. So get rid of that. Then there's another God right here. That God relationship was deeply wounded. Yeah, that should be that capital. Should be capital. And then whom is lower case? And well, then whom up here should go. be lowercase with whom? That should be lowercase too. No, right? Sorry, down. Uh, let's see. Oh, right like here. With whom? Yep. Yes, yep. perfect. So save. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This writing was started. It should be as a mystery. I follow the spirit's lead in ignorance and faithfulness. I didn't know what it was until it was finished. May each of us have that wisdom for our own lives. May we not judge ourselves until the final page has been written. In the meantime, I wish you courageous living to have a story to tell. When the last page is turned, may we all come to see the beauty of our whole story told with God as our author. Okay, let's go back to in the meantime, I wish you courageous living to have a story to tell. Let's change the end of that because you're giving the reader a call to action. You want them to do something. Uh, it, it sounds like, but it's not clear. It sounds like you want them to have the courage to tell their story. Is that what um, you're telling them to do? Um, well, yeah, I guess. Because it yeah. says, I wish you yeah. courage living to have a story to tell. Uh -huh. So we could say, um, I wish you courage to be able to tell your story or to be able to, to accept and live with your story. Okay. One of those. I wish you courage. Courageous living. Or courage, okay. Okay. 
In the meantime, I wish you find. See, see how that sounds. In the meantime, I wish or I hope that you find courage to tell your story. Okay. Yeah, I hope that you, that's my hope. Hope that you find courage to. Okay, so you have to get rid of courageous, so courage. Okay, to tell. So your story. To tell your story. I'll make, I'll make your bold. Because this, this is what we want them to think about as they're reading. Think about their own story. Mm -hmm. Okay, in the meantime, I hope that you find courage to tell your story. When the last page is turned, we may all come to see the beauty of our whole story told with God as our author. Love mm -hmm. it. Love it. Mm -hmm. This is beautiful. I'll tell you. Susan, oh. most people don't come with the story already written as beautifully as you've written it. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, they usually have to, they usually need time to write it as we're working together, oh. but you already have it. So this is awesome. Oh. Okay, so I think that's the end of the introduction. And then there's an image that's going to go here. Okay, yeah. so, so this is the name of the print. Yep, a heart full of compassion. That's that line. Yep. All right. So I'm going to just make that a heading right there. And then the image will go here. Okay, great. Okay, wait. So All this, right. okay, so, okay, so, the, so flip, keep going. Okay, so here, the universe yet incomplete on the sixth day. So this is, and actually, I should probably have her when she's shooting these prints because I took it from the top as a calligraphy deal. So it's kind of an image in itself. Okay. Um, so that will be an image page also. Okay. So we're so, gonna put image here. Yeah, image, yeah. Cause what I'll do is I'll have her take the top of the woman print, which is done in calligraphy. And that will be the beginning of that page. Okay. So then this, the universe yet, is that a title? No, that's how it begins. That's how the print begins. The universe okay. yet incomplete on the sixth day, God created her woman and God said to her, I shall give to you. And then the first thing is a heart full of compassion. So it's the first painting and image. Okay. But see, this is on a separate page. So the heart full of compassion. So that oh, one, yeah. that's here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so take this out. Yep. Okay. So on what goes on this page? What image just goes this, here? It will just be the beginning of the print. And it can be actually in a really, we can make it the size of the page. It could be, it's a calligraphy. It's written in calligraphy. Um, hold on a minute. I'm okay. Gonna let me see, yeah, let me see it. Yep. Okay, so this is that part that I'll have her shoot, if you can see it. Oh boy, it's gonna be hard. Anyway. Okay, yeah, I see it. The universe yet incomplete. On the sixth day, God created her woman and, and God said to her, I shall give to you. And then it starts the first line, a heart full of compassion. 
Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. And then the next line is uh, a spirit free to fly with the birds. Beautiful. So actually, I would like, if possible, to have, as it's written here, be the heading with the painting. Yes. I'm going to have to talk to her in terms of when she shoots that. We may. I, I'm not sure how we'll do it. I'm going to figure that out on Wednesday. Okay. But each line, because each line is done with a different uh, font, you know, it's all. Wow. Yeah, so it's all done in different. Okay. Yep. So the that's going to be beautiful. the The worst case scenario is because the book the book is only going to be like this big. Yeah, it should still be okay. Yeah, it sh we could take her image and just whoop, shrink yeah. it down, do that, or part of it could be on one page, then you turn it. The next part of it's on the next page, then you turn it, and the next if if that's if that's what has to be done but i think it should be okay just to take the whole thing and just zoom it yeah small right that's what yeah but to do that yep. yep i mean that's what we're going to work towards so that's awesome is is yeah. she a photographer yes that's what she does so she can yeah okay yeah. yep she's very gifted yay so let her you might want to write down in your notes okay when the whole book is done the dimensions are six by nine okay so yeah, if she could make it a six by nine image, that would be awesome. Yep. Uh, if it has to be five by seven, that's kind of small, um, but it still may work, but we'll see. Okay. Okay. Yes, looks good. And prints, how many prints do you have to go in, in the book? How many are there? Um, hold on, I'm just counting right now. So counting this top one, the universe yet incomplete. Okay. Okay. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, uh, seventeen. Seventeen paintings. Okay. Seventeen paintings. And that's because there's seventeen lines. Yes, correct. In the in the print, okay. Yep. You awesome. want me to read you this? Have I? Yes. Ever read you? Let I, me just give it to you. On the sixth day, the universe yet incomplete, God created her woman, and God said to her, "I shall give to you a heart full of compassion, a spirit free to fly with the birds." a vessel to carry life into the world, wisdom to know great truths, courage to rise out of oppression, strength to move mountains, gentleness to kiss the earth, passion to set the world on fire, vision to respect the earth that bore you, a playful nature to dance with the children, Laughter to fill the valleys, tears to wash the pain away, hands for laboring and loving, intuition to know the unknown, desire to be that which you were created to be. And God said to her, woman, I have created you in my image and likeness and you are good. So that's it. That's the basis of the book. Wow. I've got tears and I've got chills. <laughs> yep. Which actually was my story. I mean, if there's anything a survivor of sexual abuse has forgotten or never knew, it's the fact that she is good. And when I wrote this piece, I was writing it because I'm the one that needed to hear it, but I had too much pride to even recognize that. So it's been a number of years coming that I know that this was given for me. And now I can then pass it on and share it for others. So wow. that's how this went. 
And this piece was definitely an inspiration of God because normally when I would do a calligraphy piece, I would have a layout and I would be <laughs> writing something. I'd be doing this and that. I was writing the top of this and I didn't even know how the bottom was going to end. And that is unheard of. I've never done another piece like that. So that's how this piece went. So it was definitely uh, inspired by God and continues to. So I know it's meant to do its work out there for people. Okay, so there we are. And when did you, what was the year when you created it? Um, let's see. Hmm. When I actually wrote the first piece, it was in uh, probably 1985, because that's when I was in school. And then I actually did the print in 1988. So yeah, it was several years later. I got married in the meantime, and then through John's encouragement. The reason I did the print was because there was a woman in class and after I had, you know, opened this thing and, and Liz was right, everybody kind of stood and went, oh my God, you know, uh, <laughs> I'm kind of standing there going like, yeah. And this woman, someone said, are you going to reproduce this? And I was like, no, you know, like, you know, again, shame, shame. And this one woman said to me, don't be stingy. And she, it was like somebody had taken a fist and laid it right there. And I knew, I knew then that I had to move on. So that one line, don't be stingy. And that also has got this book moving, you know, it's not mine. It's not mine to have. It's only wow. conduit, you know, so. Woo. This is amazing. I'm, and I'm so, I've got chills because over the past six months, mm. I've worked with lots of clients but this particular summer, and I always have a different group every summer and every winter, but at this particular season right here, I've attracted women that have had sexual abuse in their wow. past. And that's what my first book was about. It was about wow. my, my experience with sexual abuse, how I came through that, how it impacted my marriage, which is a, such a great marriage of 22 years but how the struggle. And so this summer, it's like, I've attracted so many women that are either in the process of healing or have completely healed. And mm -hmm. now they're ready to tell their story and let other people hear it. Yeah. So this is totally God, divine appointment. It is, it is, it is God. <laughs> yep. Woo! Totally God. Okay, so we've got 15 more minutes. We've gotten through a lot. Let's let's uh -huh. look let's look at the manuscript again. It's so beautifully written. Um, I'm what I'm doing, I made a heart full of compassion, a heading. Is that okay? Yeah, I think what I, well ultimately though, I, I think I will have the calligraphy when the actual image okay. I will have that on there so you won't need to have that because oh. I'm gonna take it from okay. the calligraphy line here. Okay, so this is yeah, not a headache. But you can keep it there now because I've okay. got to get with Rachel. I don't know what the limits are going to be. So okay. we may just have to leave it as you have it. We'll see. Okay, so I'll do, I'll go do an undo. And Rachel, is she's the photographer? Correct. What's her last name? I know a Rachel that's a photographer. Oh, Rachel Engelman. Okay, I've had I've never heard of her. I, mean, yeah. I had another client that was doing a book, and and her photographer was Rachel. Yeah, well, <laughs> you never know. It's a small world. I know. Okay, so let's go to this. Is a heart full of compassion. So this is a heading, right? Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna make this a heading. So it's, so the, if I have to make it a heading now, so that it will be a part of the table of contents. Okay. So it's best to start out with exactly the formatting that we want so we know okay so that's saved so that's a heading and then this needs to be indented and i need to single space the rest of that yep 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 
This is going to be single space. And then it'll, this will all come together. Oh, no, 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 no. That goes there. Yep. So you think the single spacing is better? The way, yeah, it lays out on the page much better. Okay. It looks very clean. And mm -hmm. what we're going to do is once we order your, your, your printed copy, you'll get one, I'll get one. And then what will happen is we'll both go, we'll flip through it together and we'll say, oh no, that doesn't look right. We need to do this. Uh -uh, no, no, no. And then we'll change it around. Okay. But to start, usually the one point, it's not single and it's not double, it's 1.5 space. Got it. Got so it. that, and then there's no, I never put spaces between the paragraphs. So that usually looks really nice. Okay. But if it doesn't, then we could just, you know, we could easily okay. just change it. Yeah, this is looking good. Okay, so that introduction is there. This is where the image, first image will go here. Then another image will go here. And then this is the, this is the explanation behind the image. They're just, they're, I won't even say explanation. It's just um, reflections that were inspired okay. that cluster okay. under the title, I guess. Okay. When. So we need to put in a page explaining what that is. So we'll put uh, reflections and then we'll come up with some kind of a statement so that the reader knows what's happening now. They'll know that there's been a transition. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, save. So I'll put a page break here so that that's, it has its own page. Reflections, yep. So that will be Times, New Roman, and it'll be 22 for the titles. And it's a headache. There we go. Perfect. All right. So that's blank for now. All right. So here we go. Go ahead and read. A heart full of compassion. I remember as a child the shame I felt when they spoke of you, Mary. They said you were pure, never knowing sin, while I was a child of sin. I remember not wanting to lift my eyes, keeping them focused on the floor. I didn't dare approach you with my spotted soil, so, soiled soul. It would only look blacker compared to your pristine white one. I couldn't bear the contrast. So in my earliest years, being a child so in need of your compassion, of your mother's love, I did not dare approach you. Even now, as a grown woman, I wonder who you are and who I am. Are we really so very different? Mm. Take my gentle hand, Mary, and with the might of your spirit, lift my eyes to meet yours, that I might see your compassion and acceptance. Help me to open myself to your mother's love, a love that does not question my past, but only loves me in the present moment. May your vision cast out all shame. Let your glance penetrate my broken, discouraged shell, piercing my being with an unforgettable sting of sweet compassion that I may never recover, only to lie in its intoxicating embrace. Okay, this we need to break this up into two separate sentences. Okay. It's super long, even though you have commas, but it's still super long. Okay. Um, let your glance penetrate my broken, discouraged shell. By shell, what do you mean? Yeah, I don't like shell. I don't like it there. How about being? Are you talking about your physical body or your soul? Soul. Okay, so let's just put that. Now read it. How does it sound? Let your glance penetrate my broken, discouraged soul. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, so then the next part. So, and so we could break it there. May it pierce my being with an unforgettable sting of sweet compassion that I may never recover. What do we mean by it? Her compassion, okay. her glance. 
Well, there we go. Lance. There we go. I, I don't like it. It doesn't really okay. help us. Mary. Oh, no. Okay. May, go ahead. Go ahead. may your glance. Okay. There you go. Yeah, your glance. So. Pierce my being. With an unforgettable sting of sweet compassion. I don't know if I like sting either. Hmm. What do we what do we want to feel here? Do we want to feel pain or or peace? Just calm. Second. Yeah, how about peace? Unforgettable peace of sweet compassion. Period. That's another period. Yeah, period there. Yep. Take out never. Let's put what we want instead of what we don't want. Oh, okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let me think a minute. Huh. How about may I remember um, may I remember may I remember who I was created to be? As God's beloved child. Okay, so now listen, I'm going to read this paragraph. Just just listen and tell me what you think. Okay. Because we made a big change. <laughs> Want to make sure it still has the same meaning. Yep. Okay. All right. Take your gentle hand, Mary, and with the might of your spirit, lift my eyes to meet your... It should be yours. Yours. I didn't catch that. There we go. To meet yours. It should be apostrophe S, right? No? Yeah. Um, no, but there's a comma there. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, no, you're right. There is an yeah. apostrophe because it's possession. Right. Yes. There we go. So save. Uh, but it's going to harass us, this little grammatical thing. Oh, nope. We're going to leave it. There we go. Ah, there's two S's. That's what it is. Okay. All right, take your gentle hand, Mary, and with the might of your spirit, lift my eyes to meet yours, that I might see your compassion. Okay, so this doesn't it. two S's here. So it should be just Y-O-U-R apostrophe S and then. This is, oh. this is the actual way it should go. I spelled it wrong in the beginning. Well, it shouldn't have two S's. Yeah, yours. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, it's weird. Okay. <laughs> Meet yours right. that I might see your compassion and acceptance. Help me to open myself to your mother's love. And, oh, this is her, your mother's love. Not her mother's love, right? Her, her, her love, her motherly love. Yeah. Okay. But that's fine. Her, because if you put an S, that means her mother's, like her mother's book. Mm -hmm. So her mother, your mother's love, a love that does not question my past, but only loves me in the present moment. May your vision cast out all shame. Let, whoa, whoa. Let your vision cast out all my shame. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so my shame. Let your glance penetrate my broken, discouraged soul. That's powerful. May your glance pierce my being with an unforgettable piece of sweet compassion. May I remember who I was, who I am. 
Yeah. I was, yeah, who I am. It because yeah. it doesn't flow right. if it was. May yeah. I remember who I am? A woman created as God's beloved child. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, may I remember who I am? A woman created as God's beloved child. Mm -hmm. Okay, save, 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 save. Okay, so that's where we're going to stop. And then Friday, we're going to go here. Okay. Wow, we're already on page 12. That's good. Okay, so we're going to stop. We're going to go ahead and save this, close it. Okay. And then, beautiful. All right. And so we're at the end of our recording. So what did we do today? Let's do a recap. What did we do today? How do you feel too? Good. How do you feel? I think it's great. I just feel, yeah, like we're moving. This is really great. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So next steps between now and Friday, I will continue to read through it and I will continue to format it uh, and make it the correct uh, spacing, all that good stuff. So that's that's what I'll do. And then we'll we'll continue to read it on okay. Friday. We'll see how many pages we can get through. We, we already got up to page 12. That's awesome. There's only 143 pages. When we add the prints, that will be what, 17 more pages? Yeah, but that I think the 143 includes that 17, so. Got it, okay. So this is, yeah. This is awesome. And then we'll put, we'll take everything and we'll put it inside of the template for the book. And that's going to shrink everything down. And so it'll, it'll make it a few less, probably make it about 125 pages yeah. or because it'll, it'll shrink them down, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. This is good. Yeah. Hot dog. This is awesome. Yeah. We got everything. Yeah. And it's great. It's fun to read this again. This and is read it with a you know tweaking it here and there because like i said what i wrote 28 years ago i'm not the same woman so yes i wanted to really reflect where i am today so Woo! all right i'm yeah, so proud right? of you you're doing yeah. it Thank you. i'm doing it <laughs> with your help yes <laughs> this is this is this is my full-time job this is what i love to do is help oh. people get through oh. these these stories yeah yeah the toughest stories are the best stories yep <laughs> that's the truth that's the truth all right so between what do we need to do between now and friday what do i what, need to do what, I'm gonna yeah to video again okay and then with the prince what did you say you were going to do about the prince oh i'm going to Ma i'm going to milwaukee and gonna get that all shot up so that that'll be a big job huge Okay. So Wednesday and Thursday is when I'm going to do that. So that will be my, my homework. So you're going to travel? Yeah, I have to go three hours to get there. Ah, yep. My husband's going week. with me. Yeah, we're hopping in the car at eight in the morning and heading out. And she's going to take a picture of what is she? Tell me what she's going to do. So she's going to photograph all the paintings. The paintings right now are about, you know, they're about this big. I mean, they're, so she's going to have to really shoot them down and get them. Yeah, I could hold on a minute. Wow. Hold on, hold on real quick. See, all of the paintings are about this big. Wow. Whoa. Yeah, so it's going to be a lot of uh, work on her end to get it squared away. Yeah. 
but it'll work out because when I had it done and I just, I don't even remember how I had them in that book, but in the one, the hard copy I told you, they're only this big and they're yeah. clear as a bell. I mean, these big things went down to this and they are still clear as a bell. Okay. So it's going to be great. That, yeah. I was a little worried about that, but that's no. okay. No, because okay. I mean, honestly, like I said, I'll have them bigger than that, but they're, they're very, very readable, very, yeah, everything is right there, which is wow. kind of amazing, but yeah. So did you paint those as well? I did, yep. So you painted those and you did the calligraphy. Oh, yeah. wow, wow. And did you sell them separate? These have never, you... these have never, these have never, these aren't sold anywhere. I mean, these are just have been in a plastic bag for 28 years. Oh, wow. So the only wow. thing I sold was the woman print. And then these paintings, that's where they've stayed until now. Oh, this is going to be a wonderful book. Yeah. This is going to have a lot of layers to it. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and I think I mentioned this to you that when I was working on these, when I started the writing and I was doing these paintings, and I mean, I was doing them like a bandit, really. I had been diagnosed. I was pregnant with my daughter, Anna, my um, second daughter, and I was diagnosed with lupus. And I was so crippled that I could not, at the because I paint standing up. And so when I would go to, which was like only four feet away, when I would have to go over to the stove, I would have to shuffle over there. And then one day in the middle of all this, and I had done a huge portion of the writing, the symptoms were gone. And I just thought, well, this is a fluke. And then when I went back in later for retesting, I was healed. The lupus was gone and it really, was gone through my working with these paintings and the writing. So that is what um, I believe anyway. And that's the power yes. of our creativity coming through. Yes. Yeah, and I've been, I've been free since. So that's- My goodness. And what year was that when you had your daughter? 1993. Yep. I, I, yeah, let me think. Yeah, 93, yep. I'm That's typing this, I'm typing this into the notes because this may go into your book as well. This is your backstory. Oh. Wow. Someone else may be in that spot right now. Yep. And they need to hear that. Yep. Whew. All right, let's smile for the picture. Oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay, one, two, three. Okay, one more. Yay. Awesome. <laughs> Woo! Okay. okay, well, safe travels. I will see yeah. you Friday at the same time. Yeah, wish me, keep this in your prayers that I this all works out. This will be a big hurdle to get these photographs and get it. That's the big, yes. that's the big leap right now. But, well, Je Jesus, take the wheel. Jesus, take yeah, the wheel. Absolutely. He will take the wheel. <laughs> he's, taken, he's taken all of this wheel. So yeah, I don't doubt it for a minute. And Rachel, like I said, she's a graphic designer. So she designs magazines. And oh. so she, yeah, she has a very extensive background. I, she'll do a great job. I know she will. Awesome. So will you be with her on Friday? Maybe I could ask her about the cover. No. She also, she's not doing the cover. The cover is already done, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. So no worries. But that you know what? I should take that and I'll have her shoot it and send it to you. Yeah. Just, just cover. in case we need it for to size it and everything. Yep. No, okay. I will um, have her do that. No, I'll, no, cause I'll be coming back on Thursday. We're staying Wednesday night. Okay. Um, Okay. I'll be back here by noon Thursday. Beautiful. All right, darling. Safe travels. Okay. Thank you. On for the next hurrah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Great job. See you All Friday. Right, you. Good enough.
Bye-bye. Bye.